Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Gemini New Moon webinar. As we continue our work with the cycles of the new moon, we focus, bring our focus to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And today we focus on goal number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And let's just have a moment of pause as we come in together as a group united through distance. Our meditation work through the New Moon webinars focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity and the planet. The goal is to vitalize thought forms that help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Now I invite Dot to lead us in our ceremony of the name and circle. Thank you, Alexander. And welcome and hello, everyone. In the naming circle, we are uniting our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. And the key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment which creates the group field and allows it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So as we do each new moon, I will say your name, your first name, unless there are two same first names, then I'll say your last name also. And then please say your name and where you are calling in from. Dot Maver, calling in from New Hampshire, USA. We'll begin with the staff and presenters, and then we will move to the attendees list uh, and gently go through and offer our voices and our hearts into the circle, into the group field. Daniela. Greetings, everyone. Daniela Nestorovic here. I'm calling in from Belgium, Brussels. Welcome, Daniela. Inma. I am Inma Nogues, or P. I come from Barcelona, Spain. Thank you. Well, yes, welcome, Inma. Catherine. I'm Katherine Davison, calling in from Texas, USA. Welcome, Katherine. Alexander. Hi, this is Alexander Ilchuk calling from New York. And uh, Welcome, Katya Alexander. Kaufman. Oh, sorry. Welcome, Alexander. Katya. Yes, Katya Kaufman from New York. Welcome, Katya. Annette. Hi, 
I'm Annette Hill from Germany, Munich. Welcome, Annette. Anne Marie. Marie. Anna Marie Skogo from Denmark. Welcome, Anna Marie. Annette. Annette. Annette Löffler from Denmark. Denmark. Welcome, Welcome. Annette. Annette. Avon. Avon. Avon from San Avon Francisco, from Bay, Francisco Bay Area, USA. Welcome, Avon. Beata. Welcome, Beata. Bernard. Bernard Schnering from France. Welcome, Bernard. Betty. <coughs> Betty? Hi, I'm Betty from North Florida, USA. Welcome, Betty. Catherine. Catherine Payer, Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Catherine. Cheryl. Cheryl Benson, Ames, Iowa, USA. Welcome, Cheryl. Damien. Damien, please unmute yourself. Damien from Ireland. Welcome, Damien. Danielle. Welcome, Daniel. Darcy. Darcy Sessions, Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome, Darcy. Elisa. Elisa from Resende, in Brazil. Welcome, Elisa. Ella. Hi, Ella from Denmark. Yes. Welcome, Ella. Thank you. Jillian. Mm -hmm. Gillian from Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Gillian. Ginny. Aloha, everyone. It's Ginny from Maui, Hawaii. Welcome, Ginny. Greta. Hello, I'm Greta from Denmark. Welcome, Greta. Jenny. Please unmute yourself, Jenny. Jenny. Welcome, Jenny. John. John Sadovy, Missouri, USA. Welcome, John. Josette. Hello, I am Josette from France. Welcome, Josette. Joyce. Hello, I'm Joyce from BC, Canada. Welcome, Joyce. Karen. Karen Gritska from Portland, Oregon, USA. Welcome, Karen. Catherine. Welcome, Catherine. Lerna. Hello, everyone. It's Luna from Denmark. Welcome, Luna. Lynn. Welcome, Lynn. Marguerite. Please. Go ahead, Marguerite. 
Welcome, Marguerite. Maria and Bart. Please unmute yourselves, Maria and Bart. Yes, hello, Maria Caligari and Bart. Uh, Bart Cook, New York, USA. Greetings, everyone. Welcome, Maria and Bart. Maria Elena. Please unmute yourself, Maria. Welcome, Maria. Mark. Mark and Maria from Florida, USA. Welcome, Mark and Maria. Martha. Hello, everyone. Martha from New Jersey, USA. Welcome, Martha. Michael. Blessings, everyone. This is Michael calling in from Hawaii. Welcome, Michael. Mirna. Please unmute yourself, Mirna. Welcome, Mirna. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis. Welcome, Nathaniel. Nicole. Nicole Claude uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, USA. Welcome, Nicole. Pat. Please unmute yourself, Pat. From BC, Canada. Welcome, Pat. Paul. Please un Hello. there you go. Hello, Paul Murphy, uh, Lancashire in England. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Paul. Regine. Welcome, Regine. Roswita. Hello. Oh, is that Regine? Yes, yes. Hello. Regine from Germany. Ah, Regina. Welcome, Regina. Roswita. Please unmute yourself, Roswita. Welcome, Roswita. Sarah. Hi, friends. Sarah from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Sarah. Tamara. Tamara. Welcome, Tamara. Bali. Please unmute yourself. Hi, this is Valley Shirky from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Valley. Wendy. Please unmute yourself, Wendy. Welcome, Wendy. Zenaid. Hi. Zenaid from Geneva. Welcome, Zenaid. Thank you. And over to you, Katya. Hello, everyone. Let's get united with the energies of light and love, goodwill, and will to good.
this clear and align our bodies. Take three breaths, inward, outward. and upward, aligning with the soul. Let's see our group as a circle. With many working together with us in and out of incarnation. And in the center of the group, let's see the beam of light, the presence of the group soul. And our group etheric center. Through them, we connect and become one. And then we expand our connection with a group new group of world service. And then we expand our connection to one humanity. We see it as a part of a great triangle, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. We align with the silence of Shambhala. And with the note of Christ, the heart of hierarchy. And with a great triangle. Buddha, Avatar of Synthesis and Spirit of Peace. We visualize the energies of Gemini. Pouring through the great beings that we call Mercury, Venus, and Earth. We align with those energies coming through great beings. And we focus in the heart center of the group. Prepared to work for the goals of the United Nations.
so now we <clears throat> standing in the energies of the great sign Gemini. It is really intimately related to humanity. One, because Earth is one of the rulers, hierarchical rule that allows humanity to become a messenger, messenger for lower kingdoms. On the other hand, it is a potent source of energy of love coming through the mind. Gemini is um, the keynote. I recognize my other self. And through the waning of that self, I glow and grow. It is the connection between the soul and the personality, two brothers. Castor and Pox, the soul and personality create this possibility of solving things. It's the light of interplay. And um, when it comes to practical situations, and we're working today with the goal of infrastructure, this energy becomes extremely valuable because it allows it to solve the problem. To find a special solution. Each sign has an opposite sign. And those two opposing energies, which essentially is one, they find their connection through the sign of Gemini. The opposing side to Gemini, Sagittarius, is the point where the duality that is awakened becomes one pointedness, the goal. So the energy of Gemini is very important when we are trying to find a solution. It also is the festival of Christ because the energies of the second ray are pouring through. The great bear, again, Pleiades and uh, Gemini. So Christ consciousness is being I don't know, accessible when we stand with the energies of that site. The principle of mind, the messenger, Mercury and Venus both are extremely potent presences of that. So when we're top thinking about the sustainable goals and the goal of UN working to harmonize and find that way, that path to one solution. Thank you. Hi, um, today we, could we do the screen share? Or yes, okay, screen. now you can show your screen.
Yes, we can see your screen now. Okay. Uh, should I open preferences? I haven't seen this prompt before. Okay. Um, so thank you very much. We are beautifully aligning in this new moon of Gemini and naturally we focalize our attention upon the themes of the distribution of the energies potentiated in Taurus and thus Gemini is often associated with distribution of information, of knowledge, resources, goodwill, and even prana. Oops. Um, the Sustainable Development Goal 9, Innovation and Infrastructure, under this influence of the higher orders, focuses on building the world we want to inhabit. Today, our world is characterized by great imbalances. And we have challenges to speak to and overcome the way our resources are harnessed and distributed, whether they are natural or man-made. And examples include energy, food, water, monies, and travel ways. Historically, we've witnessed these enormous inequities in access to the basic necessities of life. The coming era realizes a fair and abundant flow to enable prosperity for all. Our focus here is to highlight a few examples working at different levels of human endeavor. First, at the national or economic policy level, I wanted to share with you the work of a now world famous economist named Kate Raworth, who along with some other leading thinkers has named the obvious that expansion in terms of output and utilization of resources will rapidly deplete the very home we live in and ourselves as well. In doing so, she asked, what if we reimagine that we want to have an economy organized around optimizing life for people and planet and working from there? She has coined this framework, donut economics. Toward the center, if in the smallest part of the donut you see areas of life, and if we have a shortfall, life is threatened. On the outer band, you see the ecological ceiling, and thus, if we use and create too much, then we overshoot the climate and come out of balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second example, working at the individual and just human to human level, is called Kiva. Kiva was born in the autumn of 2005 to bring down barriers worldwide in terms of accessing credit, to open the doors for micro lending by people instead of banks. Grameen Bank, a more famous example, was an institutional demonstration that microcredit is a feasible and even profitable venture. Traditional banks followed on who saw the movement as an expansion of their own profitability motives. But, excuse me, Kiva was established specifically to facilitate goodwill and therefore loans from individual to individual or individual to group or group to group with small amounts at a zero interest rate level. The repayment rate is better than most commercial banks 
and thus is proof that the goodwill economy is sustainable. Finally, at the global level, it is often said that what you focus on grows. GAMEEP is the Global Alliance for the Ministries and Infrastructure of Peace. It is a worldwide alliance of NGOs, civil society campaigns, private citizens, and elected officials from over 50 countries. The vision of GAMEEP is to shift the focus from departments of defense and thus and those associated resources for militarization instead into departments of peace building and mutual cooperation. Their chief focus is on, excuse me, global uh, goodwill. And thus holding the vision of peace and, con and focalizing it toward a global meeting around that focalization has been their primary thrust to serve as a counterpoint to our over-militarized society. In sum, we hold a vision for the energies of the earth to be of the purest and highest quality, available in abundant supply for all, and of a kind to foster the radiant resurgence of planetary health. Now, thank you so much, Catherine. And um, we're going to pass the microphone over to Inma now, who will lead us through the meditation. We breath deeply. and fill ourselves with peace. We join our group Soul, a focus of love, of wisdom and power. We consciously unite with all the great sages of all time. We ask for your guidance and inspiration. We visualize our group center as we take a unified breath and align ourselves within the group field. Our hearts unite across distance. And we extend our group light to illuminate and experience the loving heart of Gaia that it's ever present in the one life. As a group, we lift our consciousness and we look at the Mother Earth, Gaia, in all her beauty.
and with all the present challenges. And we see the sustainable development goals. A, book, a blueprint that countries have agreed upon through the United Nations. We hold these thought forms in the group mind. As we focus now our attention on goal nine. We connect to the superior plans of consciousness, to the sensed ideas, the purpose and thought forms that help to create a new society, a new world. We visualize how the minds and hearts of humanity rise to a new consciousness and we enter the power of silence together for a few minutes now. As we register our impressions, we see the goal expressed through love, care, wisdom, power, trust, a group, a group conscience. as we realize the livingness of no one left behind.
and build our resilience all over the world. Now we anchor the truth form to distribute the energy gather as we sound the mantra. Let the forces of light bring illumination to all humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of good will everywhere, everywhere met in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Oh, oh. Thank you, Inma. Thank you. And as we return with those impressions um, from the ideas that have been flowed forth from Katya and Catherine, um, we open the floor for you to, for all of you, um, to to contribute any impressions that you might have. So um, please raise your hand or type into the chat. We'd love to hear your voice if you have anything that you'd like to share. And um, while we're thinking about that, um, Yes, just really noting the emphasis on innovation and ethicalness in innovation that's come through in that stimulus and and the meditation as well. And um, well, these the impression that came for me was um, this idea of this visual of little seeds of new ways pushing their heads up through the soil and um, having to make their way in a, a garden full of other more vigorously growing plants that um, are different <laughs> um, 
and yeah, the importance of holding that love and that goodwill um, and imbuing the new structures with, with that. I can pick up on, on this sharing and indeed the energy of Gemini is unique. It's a connecting and distributing focal point of for the entire zodiac. And uh, the goal nine was chosen for this month for this energy quality of this energy uh exactly for the that quality of shifting to the next level bringing pairs of opposites to the higher point of resolution bringing the focus to the point of the soul where the wider vision could be seen and the new ways could be envisioned and radiated forth and so Gemini is that energy that can shift us from any conflicting pairs of opposites and gives us the soul vision. And as we work with this energy and with this goal in our meditation, we can see how the future of humanity is conditioned by the free distribution or and the flow of energy and as we enter the age of Aquarius the free distribution of resource not free but like free as open as unimpeded is uh, an important part of the new vision because uh, the same as Aquarius rules the blood system in the physical or human body the same uh, in the age of aquarius this the resources as a blood uh, of human system would have to circulate unimpededly delivering all the necessary components of life to all the cells in the great organism of humanity over and um, I would also uh, that um, now, as of now, Venus is in Gemini. And um, as was mentioned by, by one of the astrologers, it's going to be there for unusually long time. So we are at the moment of a deep connection with that energy. And we've been there for quite some time now. So I think that also will make it possible to focus on the uh, etheric component of that energy, this livingness. Because the soul distributes its energy to the etheric plane. And our connection with that principle is really important, especially when it comes to new things. Because normally those new things, they come through people who embody them. Embody that principle, embody that idea, forefront, and allow others to see really what it is about. And then shift to that fiery point of Sagittarius when uh, the goal is seen and it's going to be reached. So, 
this is also, I think, important for the UN and sustainable development goals because the amount of life is of the essence for implementing those goals and leaving them and making it as a point of uh, gauging more life, less life. Thank you. Mm. Yes, and I see that Michael has his hand raised, Alexander. Yes. Hi, Michael. Hi. Um, I would like to touch on uh, the microcredit that was discussed, and uh, it is a a methodology that really brings people together rather than um, than people begging to large corporations to to attain a, a little bit of funding to help them move forward uh, to make their lives better. Uh, so that that's one thing, and then I also wanted to bring in the idea underlying Habitat for Humanity, which is providing decent, affordable shelter. Um, and it, it also involves a hand up rather than a hand out, where uh, people who go into the program provide a certain amount of sweat equity into their own home. And then um, when every when it's completed and the keys are turned over, they have a no interest loan to pay back, uh, which, which is actually help funding more home construction. Interestingly, in Guatemala, uh, Habitat in that country has constructed over 100,000 homes for families. And it, it's a worldwide, uh, thing going on. Thanks, Michael. And I see Nicole has a hand raised as well. Uh, Nicole, please unmute yourself. I believe Catherine also wanted to share something. I'd love to wait for Nicole and I'll go after you. Hey, Nicole lowered her hand, but if you still would like to share something, Nicole, please just unmute yourself. So probably Catherine, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I wanted to speak to this theme of distribution in Gemini specifically as it relates to the Triangles project, which has been a project of increasing potency inside our world servers community. And um, as these streams descend on Earth, they penetrate more deeply through us as humans and also through the planet. And what appears to emerge are healing crises and relational crises. And so we see today also the distribution of karma in the form of corona, um, which has mysterious effects. And I'm not one in a person of knowing about what they are, but I've spent quite a bit of time focalizing on these issues of distribution and um, one thing that people comment on over and over again is that the barrier is not technical, it's human. That human factors impede the free flow. And so it always brings a related invitation inside myself. How do I impede the free flow of goodwill um, at this time? And then how do I facilitate it? 
So today feels like a moment to explore those themes. Yeah, it's so true. We need to look within ourselves. We need to look on all levels and um, the discussion is, is bringing all these different levels through and, um, you know, the examples that you provided, Catherine, and as um, Michael was speaking to, um, they're, they're making intention for free flow um, concrete in those new infrastructures and um, but that has to happen through the people being able to remove their own blockages for, for um, distribution and then we need the etheric counterpart as you're describing and as Katya is describing too. And we have a couple of more hands up here. Um, Ginny Ross is unmuted. Did, yes. did you want to say? Hi. Hi, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the um, the opportunities for better housing um, in the United States because that's the part I know about. And they've just uh, passed laws in California and a few other places to um, allow additional dwelling units. They call them ADUs. Where I live in Hawaii, everyone's house is allowed to have an ohana, which is like a a small house, a cottage on your property of the main house. And this is this is a reflection of the family values here in Hawaii. And of course it was set up that way before the Americans took over, but I was really moved to see how the United States is adapting to the need for housing, particularly in California. And I, I have a brother in the work who's um, an architect and he's designing these um, dwelling units that can be added on to single family homes throughout California. And I think they're doing that in Washington state also. And some of them are tiny houses and some of them are cottages. Some of them are additions to an existing home. And I think it shows the consciousness moving back toward family values and to some degree, rebuilding the sense of community. Because as an astrologer, it, it seems to me that we are headed for quite a bit of financial difficulty, not just in the United States, throughout the world. And these dwelling units um, make it possible to have less homelessness. And, um, and I think it's the beginning of rebuilding um, our economy through localization, where you can get your food at a farmer's market and trade services between uh, families and communities. So I'm just noticing that in terms of a step toward innovation and in infrastructure. Thank you. Mm, thank you. And, and Jillian. Um, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry, yeah, that's it. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, hello. Um, I think, um, as has been said many times, this crisis has brought with it opportunity. And I think people in general, the majority, want better than we've got. And if they realize that they have more power than they actually use because uh, I think they've become very dependent on relying on the governments to sort their problems out and think that they can just sit back and do nothing. So I think people need motivating and to realize that they do have powers. They have the power of voting in better systems. They have the power of buying products that don't kill and ruin everything. And if they can just be motivated to use those powers, um, things could be improved. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Gillian. It's an interesting um, 
interweaving between what Gillian's saying about people being motivated and then what Ginny was saying about um, laws enabling people or allowing people to um, have agency and um, create places to share for accommodation and yeah. Recently, I um, heard the phrase shifting from being a consumer to, to become a producer. And uh, in a way, it's, a, it's about the allowing the energy to go through you and manifest in some form or another. Even if you just bake your own bread, you produce something. Even if you grow your uh, own tomatoes, you produce something. So it's about that. Uh, creating the new path. In a way, it's also creating new infrastructure for the energy flow. Mm. And it's a new, uh, I wouldn't use the word uh, industry, but it's uh, it's this new economical infrastructure that it's now s is in the process of emergence. And um, also, this idea of infrastructure, like this, I, uh, interesting. I was wanted to say about the same thing that human being being that infrastructure for the energy flow, right? But also, our infrastructure um, is part of our relationship with the planet, with the nature, with the um, energy around us when we build it is important to remember that those are not resources those are beings life happening around us is a being it's um i see that more coming up just this shift connection and it is i think going to be a very interesting change when it happens when this hardcore infrastructure will start changing the main uh, focus for me is just to keep the thought form of uh, human aspect of that human in a in the sense of the Balance of the soul, the higher vision. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to mention to the group that there is a handout attached in your control panel, and we just compiled some further resources along these themes for those who are interested, because another aspect of infrastructure is trees, the inter interface of the natural world and the infrastructure world might consist of riverways and gardens and trees and so anyway if you're interested in further resources along these themes there's a handout there for you thank you
Just looking in the questions section and um, I see somebody is asking if there will be a recording. Yes, there will be a recording um, and you'll be able to find it on our YouTube channel. Um, you can find all the previous webinars on there. Um, so if you just Google um, 2025 initiative YouTube, you'll find us and you'll be able to um, in, in <laughs> a couple of days time or when um, Alexander's had the chance to post it, um, this webinar will be there too. Thank you for asking. Actually, uh, when Daniela will post, thanks. I wanted to thank Daniela for, for her behind the scenes service, allowing the seamless flow of information sharing and making our communication infrastructure run smoothly. Thank you, Daniela. Yeah, thanks, Daniela. Mm. Yeah, this is Dot. I heartily agree. Thank you, Daniela. And that's consistent throughout so much of what happens with all these webinars. And it's a wonderful demonstration of what you were just sharing, Catherine, and what others have mentioned about this distribution and free flow. And it's when we think about uh, na Mother Nature and when we think about our bodies, that free flow and distribution of spirit, of nutrients, of through meditation, spiritual nurturing, and through taking in through the breath, uh, the oxygen that gets everywhere. We give so many uh, very concrete examples. What we're really talking about is creating an infrastructure for living in right relationship with and within ourselves, with others, and with and within all life. And it's it was a really beautiful sharing from that perspective today and this sharing that we're doing now. And that other thing I'd like to say is how grateful I am that this group consistently drops into the power of silence as we continue to build these thought forms and help anchor uh, the, the breakthrough that's that's happening on this beautiful planet we all call home. Thank you. And another image that comes into mind is that we as a group we are part of a wider infrastructure for thought forms magnification and distribution as that just said and it's it's uh, if we think about it as a as an etheric reality that it's like an opening uh mandala uh that's where each part of that mandala in connected with this center and becomes the radiant point of its own. It's like fractal opening. And each of us becomes a radiant point in our own community, in our own environment, just through meditation, receiving the note of the vision and radiating it to others and sharing it with others just with own radiant living. We don't need to go and preach. We just can live as souls and become those manifested points of uh, infrastructure of light.
So if Avon has her sound back, I think she wanted to share a thought. If you'll unmute yourself, Avon. Oh, I actually was asking you to, to share your thoughts, <laughs> not myself. Um, I'll just briefly state that um, what weaves into all of this are some very um, important indigenous um, voices and wisdom. For the last two um, days, I've been involved with um, what's called a, a, a summit, but um, a particular focus point that goes on for many days <clears throat> that is called Humanity Rising. And the yesterday and today were the first two days, and part of it has been a circle of indigenous voices. And part of what has been spoken is the return of understanding that when we understand that we are part of all of nature with a capital N, and that when we learn what Dodd has just shared about um, the importance of sharing and distribution as our greatest immunity, that part of the example of, spoke, of words spoken from people who have been on the front line for such a very long time um, in indigenous communities, just this today it was from, um, from North America, is two aspects that, that were very prevalent in all of the conversations. One was how the in, return to indigenous wisdom is absolutely imperative for the sustainability of life and for the living and right relationship. And the second was returning to what was brought up in terms of the of growing your own gardens and all of this, but um, uh, the, that a part of what has happened with reservations is that there's no no usual access to water or to food or anything else. So what what has to happen is that um, through prayer and through living in right relationship with the earth of growing your own gardens and of trying to heal the waters in whatever way you can with um, with cooperative um, eco-sustainability within your particular reservation. Another factor that was brought forward was about COVID, which is that um, this time is being used by uh, those who are in the banking business and corporations, et cetera, to uh, continue fracking and through other practices of, of, re of building pipelines, even though a halt was supposed to be caused, uh, called for all of this. And that what is happening is that while people in reservations are um, sheltering at home, what they're doing is bringing in truckloads of people to um, to go onto the reservation land and they're they're not practicing um, any of the preventative measures uh, for for preventing COVID spreading. And so what has been happening is that some of the people on the reservations are getting ill with COVID. So there's a way in which coming back into right relationship, understanding the ageless wisdom and the indigenous wisdom and um, all the work that is, and the group service that is being rendered by 2025 initiative and so many others is so invaluable at this time. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Avon. And as you share that, as we hold that in our hearts and breathe with that, uh, one of the uh, ecosystem uh, initiatives that is emerging through humanity rising, actually, and then some of the other things leading up to International Day of Peace this year is Codes for a Healthy Earth. And you can visit that at codes, C-O-D-E-S dot earth. Yeah, I, I'd also, um, as you're speaking, Avon, and bringing through that um, indigenous perspective which enriches this conversation so much. It has also um, reminded me about how, while people have been sheltering, the um, incredible increase in the use of technology 
and meeting through technological means. And um, in terms of our goal of innovation, um, how this is such an important part of our future and um, extends into, um, you know, robotics and even the transhumanist movement as well, which is a whole discussion in itself. But I think it, it just um, accentuates the need to emphasise the theme that has really been coming through of um, bringing consciousness and morality into how infrastructure is developed and the bringing in this Gemini and um, circulation and love wisdom um, into our systems, creating new systems that are built on that um, and um, infusing technology and um, all these new innovations with the intention for service of the whole. Um, and that seems like such an important part of what we need to do. And you can see on the screen now the codes for the Healthy Earth um, website. And Julian, please, please unmute yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I was just thinking the new infrastructure's got to take into account the poorest countries, and I don't really know how that will happen because it will obviously mean that as things are now, talking of Gemini, one growing and one receding, it seems to be the rich countries keep growing and the poor countries get poorer. So. I suppose it will have to be a case that the rich countries are going to have to see the necessity of financing the poor countries to be part of the whole infrastructure that's created. Yeah, such a good point. And I, I see that Martha Gallagher's on this call. I wonder if you are able to speak to that, Martha. I know that um, you often do. <laughs> I appreciate the statement that was just said and actually the flow of this entire meeting, something very meditative and uh, sharing about this particular meeting. The issue that you raised is very much um, a matter for the G20, for the World Bank, for the international monetary funds and the framework for uh, a better equitable distribution has been formed out of what's called the 2015 Addis Ababa agreement that took place in 2015, shortly before the SDGs uh, were approved. And the it's but it's people like us, the speaker, that needs to bring it to mind around the neighborhoods in which we live, because those things will happen when enough people care about it. And it, it certainly is true that somewhere in our ethical hearts, we long for everyone. Uh, receiving a share of the pie. So uh, thank you for the remark. And you can, if you Google, uh, I'll, I'll send a connection on the chat box. It, I believe if you just go to ADDIS ABBABA Agreement 2015, you'll find <clears throat> in more detail uh, uh, an ethical framework for that to happen. Thank you.
Well, thank you for the silence and for the speaking and the sharing and the contributions, everyone. And um, maybe um, we hope you'll join us next month. Um, and Alexander, would you um, be willing, able to announce the next happenings at this point? Uh, yes. Uh, thanks for this flow and uh, being together in this group infrastructure ever unfolding and emerging as we just as sun just entered a few days ago in the sign of gemini here in the northern hemisphere there is a spectacular view for the actual sign the constellation of gemini in the after sunset uh, sky and you can see as two eyes looking at you from the western sky of castor and pollux so if you're in northern hemisphere just link after the sunset with that energy and sense the quality of gemini and uh, in a way it's that new wave of esoteric astrology when we start recognizing the energies of astrological signs through our own being through our own intuition and intuition is one of the themes related to sign of gemini and as we look into those two eyes looking at us and it's remembering the keynote of gemini about the soul energy increasing and the personality energy diminishing and we invite you as we approach the festival solar festival of gemini to join our open forum where we invite us to get together in a circle to meditate and share on how do we maintain our soul-centered living following the crisis of awakening so how we maintain that sustainable connection with the soul consciousness so please join us on june 6th and 7th for that And that would be our topic for reflection throughout the month of Gemini. And as we will come, we follow the movement of sun through the sky and at the point of entrance of sun to Cancer, cardinal point of solstice, we invite you to join us for a gathering, community gathering in the global garden around the fire of the group center that would be on june 20th on the solstice day and the next day we will come together again focusing on the sustainable development goals and this time we will talk about and reflect and meditate and share on the goal six clean water and sanitation so as we move towards the cancer new moon please bring your meditative focus onto that goal that when we come together on june 21st we work together as a group on strengthening the thought forms behind this goal thank you and then invite Rebecca to lead us in a closing mantra alignment. Yeah, thank you everyone. So um, just drawing 
to gather all those thoughts for a moment that we've experienced and expressed circulation the growth of the soul the need of physical resources to be distributed for housing for banking the etheric infrastructure that underlies everything the need to take action, the need to remove our own barriers to circulation, the need to support the intention for ethical distribution within the United Nations and organisations. The need to bring balance into the global garden. And it seems like the noontime recollection is very relevant to our theme today. So we will use it to close. We know, O oh Lord of life and love, about the need. Touch our hearts anew with love, that we too may love and give. Oh, Thank you, everybody.